Well, hello there. Welcome to Stampin' in the Sand and my Live at Five class series. If you're new to my page, welcome. My name is Mary Bush. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and this is my page. So while we're waiting for some folks to join us during my Facebook Live and pop in, um, We'll just go over some of the new news from Stampin' Up! If you weren't um, at my live class last night, you may have missed out on this information. Uh, celebration ends in just a week. It ends on March 31st. I don't know where the month went, but it is almost over. Um, so with the final days of celebration, Stampin' Up! has released a new... Uh, I don't know what to call it, a new collection of items that you can earn for free when you shop with me in my online store. We have $50 level and $100 level items that you can choose from. So when your orders reach $50, you can choose a level, a $50 level item. And when it reaches $100, you can choose a $100 item or two 50s. So new to the lineup are the red rhinestone basic jewels, the mini shopping boxes, follow your art designer series paper, the shimmer detailed laser cut specialty paper, Rococo Rose Stampin' Blends combo pack, the woven threads designer series paper, and the Dino Roar designer series paper that we've been playing with this week. Those are your new $50 level items. At the $100 level, we have the Butterfly Duet Punch and the Wild Rose Dies. All right, so when you shop with me, you can start racking up your deals and grab some freebies. Just our little reward for thanking you for shopping with us. We also have a new suite of products coming your way in April. So April 1st through May 31st, the Ornate Garden Suite will become available for customers to purchase. Demonstrators have been able to purchase these throughout the month of March and um, get to know them a little bit before we're presenting them and using them in our classes. So if you're interested in joining my Stampin' Up! family, you can actually add the Ornate Garden Suite items to your starter kit. So as part of your $125 collection of items that you select for uh, the low entry price of $99, you can select some of these items. You also qualify during celebration when you join the Stampin' Up! family to select a free stamp set of your choice from any current offering for free. That's outside of the $125 in product. So you could actually add some of these um, Ornate Garden Suite stamp sets in your starter kit uh, as your additional free item. And in addition, when you join the Stampin' Up! family during celebration, which there's only a week left, like I said, you'll also receive our free 6x6 assortment pack of the current designer series papers that are offered in our annual catalog and our mini, as well as the coveted mini trimmer. Coveted because you cannot buy it. You can only get it for free when you join our Stampin' Up! family. So I have information for joining my team on my Facebook page, as well as my blog, as well as my website. And there is absolutely no um, obligation to host classes or do Facebook Lives or any of that. Uh, you can join simply for the discount. So keep in mind uh, this ornate garden suite. It's available for another week as a demonstrator or in your starter kit, and it becomes available to all customers April 1st. So that's the ornate garden suite. I also am hosting open enrollment for my hostess club. So there's information for that on my blog as well and on my website and here on my Facebook page or you can reach out to me personally if you would like more information and I can send you the, the packet via email. 
My hostess club is just a great way to start acquiring things on your wish list at, um, while staying within your budget and while earning additional free products and free tutorials. So that's just another, another way to, um, you know, keep your credit card from exploding and melting. I'm just going to take a second here. I noticed I didn't plug in. So sorry for the wiggle waggle. I just want to, I would hate for my battery to die on my phone in the middle of my live. I put a lot of prep into this one. All right. So this week I have been holding dino days. So Monday, Monday evening, last night, and again tonight, we've been playing with the dino roar suite. That's in the annual catalog on page 98 and 99. And the stamp set and the designer series paper is featured in larger imagery on page 100. It's a really fun collection. I had ordered it quite a while back because I was drawn to all the pretty colors and the cute little images and uh, I hadn't used it. So when I put a call out to my followers asking for some ideas on possible stamps or bundles that they had in their own homes and craft rooms that they hadn't used. I actually had a couple votes for this suite. So I thought, oh, that's perfect because I haven't used mine either. So I've used it now, let me tell you. I think just about every stamp is, is very well loved by now. So just to recoup, um, on what, Monday evening, I'm losing track of the days already, we created this card using the suite. I introduced um, this one sheet wonder, which I'm calling pattern blocking. I don't know if there's a name for it, but I'm calling it pattern blocking. And we just strategically cut our squares and then added our imagery and dies on the front. When I first created the card, I had used the Wiggle Bugs set. I just love these. I'm into cute these days. It must be it must be the nature of the world at the moment because I'm just into fun and cute and bright colors, which for me is a little bit um a little different. I'm usually a lot more traditional. So I had done that and then as an alternative for in the class just to show how you can strategically replace the designer series papers and the dies and the in the images um, with other suites I had created this card with the well-dressed dressed for success suite yeah I think that's correct um, so I had just used some different designer series papers from that suite and a different greeting. I had die cut the lipstick and, and colored that. So you can see that these two these cards, although they use the exact same sketch, if you wish, and the same one sheet wonder, they're completely different cards just by changing the designer series paper and the images. Okay? And let's see. Uh, that would bring us to Tuesday, which was last night. Last night we created this card with the um, Dino Roar set. This was actually a case of another demonstrator's card. I did give her full credit everywhere I published the card. And um, this was really fun and easy and quick to put together. So if you missed the live last night, be sure to catch the replay. We also created this card in last night's class. So this is on the replay as well. And there is a principal supply list with the image for the card, um, for both cards actually, that are posted here on my page. So you can print those out so you can have the image of the card as well as the supply list ready for you to recreate it at home. This was the inside of the card, so we never leave the inside of the card naked. We always complete it and have some coordinated, Im coordinated images stamped on the inside of our card. And then this afternoon, because I wanted to show you again how you could use my card as a sketch and take it to a different suite, I created this card this afternoon. So again, I used the exact same layout 
the exact same dies for the um, stitched layer dies here. And I just brought in a different suite. So we have the, oh my gosh, I'm going to draw a total blank now. We have the uh, smooth sailing dies. And that coordinates with the stamp set. And now I have put it away and I don't remember what the name of it is. Oh my gosh. Doi. All right, you know, just because you prep all day for a live doesn't mean you're going to be as prepped as you need to be. Good grief, I'll tell you. What is the name of it, guys? Help me out here. What is the name of that stamp set? Smooth Sailing? Is that the name of it? Somebody here knows. Somebody here has got to know. Come Sail Away is the designer series paper that I used on the card. Oh, coordinates with the Come Sail Away Suite, page 144 and 146. So let's go to 144. My word. Okay, here it is, the Come Sail Away Suite. So we have the Sailing Home is the name of the stamp set, thank you very much, and the Come Sail Away Designer Series Paper. So we have exactly the same layout, totally different look just by swapping our designer series paper and our die cut and stamped images. So we have our lighthouse, we have our compass, we have our birds flying by, we have a different greeting. And then on the inside, I chose to use a blue layer instead of the whisper white for a little bit different contrast and stamped my lighthouse again and my birds. And then on the envelope, I did the sailboat with the birds, and then on the back flap, I did the compass. So that's just um, a way to show you how just, if, you, if the Dino Roar Suite is not your cup of tea or doesn't really appeal to you, you can easily take my designs and just alter them using something that you have at home that you care a little bit more for. Okay, does that make sense? All right. Enough babbly babble. Let's get started with today's cards. <clears throat> and you're going to have to excuse me because I still have a little bit of that tickle. And if I suck another cough drop, I think I'm going to gag. I can't stand them. Okay, so for our first card, I think I'm going to do our more challenging card first. Because if I mess it up, I can just move on to the next card. This one's a little bit more complicated. So we need to start with a few basic uh, layers here. So I have my basic card layer. This is a piece of pretty peacock cardstock. It's cut at eight and a half by five and a half and scored at four and a quarter. I have two pieces. I'm gonna put that aside for right now. I have two pieces of Mango Melody they're cut three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. One is for the outside of the card and one is for the inside of the card. I have a designer series paper layer. This is from that Dino Roar designer series paper pack. It's cut three and three quarters by five inches. Then we have our largest stitched nested dies. And it's the cut from the largest one. This is Mango Melody cardstock. Then I had to score it, okay, with the upper left corner, meaning this piece right here, at two and three quarters. Then I moved it out one sixteenth of an inch and scored it again. So you can see my little score marks right here. Okay. Then I have a die cut scalloped circle and the largest i think this is the largest excuse me the largest stitched circle so this is the the um, scallop circle that coordinates with that size for the inside of my card what i've been telling people um, throughout the week is i've started using stitched rectangles for the inside layers of my card i just think it adds a little bit something extra as opposed to just having a straight cut piece of cardstock i just think it adds a little bit more dress and polish 
Um, I did pre-stamp the rest and relax. You deserve it in the bottom right corner because this is a cling rubber mount stamp and I needed to use my Stampamajig and the Stampamajig and I haven't played together in a long time and I was afraid if I tried to do it live, I would totally mess it up. So I did it ahead of time just to make sure I could still do it. And hopefully it's not too, you're not too dark. I'm going to move a light a little bit closer. I can't tell that with the longer days, my lighting is, is changing here in the craft room. So you'll just have to, have to bear with me for a, a little bit I don't, and hopefully it's not too dark. Okay. So let's start with some stamping. The first thing we need to do is stamp and I have to bring in my stuff here. I have, you should see the mess that's all laid out around me. It's so funny. Okay, so the first thing, let's put this away because I'll inevitably drop something on it and it's already done. I need to bring in my Pretty Peacock ink and I also need my Mango Melody ink. And we're gonna stamp our dinosaur with the little hands. And we're gonna stamp that on some Whisper White cardstock. And I just realized I need my mat. I had it all, I had it all prepped aside. I think I thought I was gonna start with the other card. So I had it all set up with the other items. Okay, so let's get him good and inky. And we're gonna stamp him. I'm gonna put away the Mango Melody before I drop something in it. And then I need to get the, um, oh my gosh, Peacock. And I need to do his, um, what are these called? The little triangles that go up and down his back. Somebody else is gonna have to, his scales. So we're gonna stamp, ooh, that didn't stamp good at all. Blah, that stamped awful. Oh, I don't know what's up with that one. That's gross, we're gonna start that again. I have no idea what happened with that one. I think I didn't press down hard enough because that was icky. Either that or there's something on my stamp. That's better. Oh, I don't know what happened to him. He has a big void in his middle. We're going to cover it up, but still. All right, so now we're going to do his scales. And I can't remember if I have something else I have to use this paper for, so I'm going to keep it relatively tight. So there's his scales. And then I need to do some words. So here I have, ready or not, it's your birthday. And that comes from, will walrus, walrus be friends? So I love this for the greetings that it has because they cut out really nicely with some of our punches and um, fit in a lot of our dies. So you have the thanks big time. It's your birthday, ready or not, just floating by to say hi. I will wal walrus be your friend from all of me. Um, there's a lot here that you can cut and paste and play around with. So we're gonna use the ready or not and the it's your birthday from this set. So we are going to try not to make a hot mess out of this. So we're gonna ink those up. And that's in the um, Pretty Peacock. And we're gonna pretend that that was a larger piece of cardstock because I wanted to die cut the ready or not with the die that we used the other day in class from this smooth sailing die set 
which was this little banner image here, which I think a lot of people have overlooked. So I have just enough room using the scrap that I, that I chose. However, luckily, I had already cut one out just to be safe. So we'll just use this one because I know it's already cut perfectly. And then the It's Your Birthday, we're going to punch out with the classic label punch. So we're just gonna line that up inside our punch and pop it out. All right. So that takes care of that. Then we also need to stamp, I knew I was missing something. We also need to stamp uh, the, I think it's called the pterodactyl. Is that the one that flies? So we need him. And I knew I needed another piece of Whisper White. What do I have? Well, get another scrap. I knew I needed to leave more room, but that's all right. Scraps are plentiful in this room. All right, so this one's gonna be lovely lipstick. So we're gonna do our lovely lipstick one. And I do not know my dinosaurs. I probably should have Googled dinosaurs before teaching this class, right? All right, so we're gonna stamp him. And then I need to do some big shot work. So we're gonna have to move all these little bits aside. So there's him. Don't need the mat until later. <clears throat> so I'm gonna get my big shot. So while we do this, who is sick of sheltering in place already? I think I'm definitely done. And it hasn't even been that long. All right, what did I do with the dyes? Oh my gosh. All right, well this is fun. I don't know what I do with my dinosaur dies. I just had them. Oh, there they are. I'll tell you, you prep and you prep and you prep some more and then you realize you can't find anything. I'll tell you. All right, so we have our dino dies. And I need this guy for him. And then I need this one for there. And then I need this guy for here. And I keep a little spare roll of washi tape next to my, next to my big shot, if I can find the end because my plates are really warped and I can't, now I can't get this to start. Um, I can't always trust that it's going to stay in place with even with the magnetic plate. So I like to just use a tiny bit of washi tape just for extra security. It doesn't need a lot, but Just enough to ensure that I don't have to start all over again with stamping. Okay. Now I just need a top plate. And I'll run that quickly through. Take the ink pad stack out while I'm doing it. This is a very tight little space here. You'd laugh if you could see me. Okay. So pop that out. Put the big shot where I won't trip over it and kill myself. Take all these off. Okay, so now we've done our die cutting. I don't know if I need that again, so I better put it where I can find it. And we're just going to pop all our little pieces out. All right, and I need the 
flying one for the next card. All right, so now we have our little pieces here. And we can start putting everything together. So I need some glue. I also need, let's see. I guess I'll just use the glue. All right. So I'm gonna start by, I have to put the scales onto the back of my little dinosaur. So I'll just use some glue. And I had a silicone mat somewhere, but guess what? I'm not gonna use it because I don't know where it is. So you can see this little notch right here. That's for his arm. So that's where his arm's gonna go. So you're just gonna lay that on there. And then you can see how his arm fits right through that little gap. So there's our dinosaur. Then we're gonna come in with our black marker. And we're just gonna give our dinosaurs pupils because it really brings them to life. I find there's a huge difference between a pupilless dinosaur and a pupil dinosaur. Okay, so now we're gonna do some layering on our circle. So this circle is just gonna get flat glued to the scallop circle. Then we're gonna take our dinosaur and just for extra precaution, I will add dimensionals to where his scales got attached to his body just to make sure that they stay put, even though I did use glue. So I'm gonna peel that off. I also just realized that I'm not sure I put the do not disturb on my phone, so I hope nobody calls. Because <laughs> that'll just, that'll be the death of me. So let's just hope nobody calls or texts. My husband had his port put in today, and knowing my luck, he will... Well, he shouldn't text me, because I told him that I was going live at 5, so hopefully he won't text me. And took that as a hint. But I haven't heard from him in a while, so I hope everything went okay. Okay, so there's our little dinosaur saying, ready or not. All right. Next, I'm going to do the stamping for the inside of our card because I want that to dry before I go handling it a lot. So I need to bring back in my Stampin' Pierce mat as we discussed the other day. You want to use a Stampin' Pierce mat when you're using the photopolymer stamps because it adds that cushioning that our rubber stamps already have built in into them during the, the uh, construction process. So we're gonna start building a scene here and I need to bring in an old olive ink pad that we hadn't used on the front of the card. And we're going to stamp, if I can find where it went. I'm telling you, I was really prepared to do this class. And now I'm falling apart. Because I wasn't as prepared as I thought I was. Okay, so we need our tree trunk and we need our palm frond. I must have forgot I was using those. And I need this block. Oh well. What's a Facebook Live if you don't realize you're not perfect, right? Perfection is overrated. That's my theory and I'm sticking to it. All right, so I need a palm frond and I need a trunk. I'm gonna do the trunk in 
pretty peacock. And hopefully, hopefully you guys aren't laughing at me too much. All right. So we're going to get rid of this ink pad before I stick my fingers in it. I need my old olive. I'm making a heck of a mess now. And I need my palm frond. I also should have a piece of scrap paper. Luckily, that's just right behind me. Okay. So now we're going to stamp. Ugh, that's a mess. That's going to end up somewhere, right? Okay. So we're just going to stamp our palm fronds. Okay, so there's our tree. So we can get rid of that because I don't need it anymore. And then we're going to bring in our insert. And I want that I want that to dry a little bit, but we need to need to keep moving. So maybe we'll, let's do some work on the front of the card while that dries a little bit. Cause I really don't want to be sticking my fingers in it. All right, so our designer series paper layer, we're just going to adhere to the front of the card. My glue's being temperamental. So that just leaves a nice little border. And then this is gonna go on the card front, like so. Okay. Now's when things get a little complicated. Cross your fingers for me. All right. This is going to get adhered to the inside panel. I usually do not use glue on my whisper white layers because I always can see like the scribble lines, but for this card, it's kind of important that it stay stuck. Okay, so this is gonna get adhered on the front, or on the, I mean on the inside, but you know what I mean. Except, I'm going to leave a bit of a gap. And hopefully I did enough. So I'm gonna put that down on the inside. Then this piece with its score line, I'm gonna put glue on both sides, hold my breath, and this needs to go inside. And I have to hope and pray that I left enough room for it to get in there and I did, and I'm gonna line it up with the front and see how I made that crease. I gave it that extra score line just to make sure that it was gonna fold neatly over the front and all that thickness of layers. And then now it's all nicely adhered to the inside because I had done the glue on both sides. And now it'll fold nicely over the front because I gave it that additional score line. So now we can come back to the front of the card and we have our stitched um, 
sit, stitch circle with its scallops, scalloped circle with our little dinosaur. And he can go on the front like that. Okay, so he's glued on. Now, if you wanted to, you could add like an additional layer or a brad or a button or something down here to keep this flap closed. I decided there was enough going on, so I didn't add an additional layer. But if you wanted to keep it closed, you could just add a little something here to tuck this flap under. So then on the inside of the card, we have our rest and relax, you deserve it. But this little dude is going to fly in to say, it's your birthday. So I just need to get some mini dimensionals. I probably should put one behind his head. Pick all these things off. Oh my gosh. So he's flying in over the trees. He can go there. And then we have the it's your birthday. We're just gonna put a little glue on that because we don't want too many layers. This is the inside of the card, right? So it's your birthday. So there you go. So you have ready or not. It's your birthday. Rest and relax. You deserve it. So what do you think? Is that cute? I think that came out super duper cute. So there's that one. And then this is the one that I was working on off of that I had created ahead of time. And this one, I had done the bird in uh, the bird. I don't know what he is. The flying, the flying dinosaur in the uh, peacock. But after that, I changed my mind and I decided that I wanted it in the lipstick. I think the lipstick is much prettier. Okay, let's move on to our next card. All right. So we have our layers that we need for our next card. And we need to do some stamping and some die cutting. So I have my dies. I have some scrap whisper white so I can do my stamping. And let's see, I don't need these dies from the first card. So I probably should put them somewhere safe. I'll put them back on the magnet that they came off of. That's probably the safest place for them, right? So you don't lose your dies in your mess. I also need my Stampin' Pierce mat to come back into the picture to do our stamping. And I think I probably need to clean my stamps so that we don't mix colors. So have you been doing a lot of stamping during this whole coronavirus outbreak? Have you been able to stamp? Do you have kids at home that are requiring attention or are you working from home and trying to get adjusted to that new lifestyle? This is pretty much all I do is stamp at home. So if I'm not at my farm maintaining that property or doing something with my dogs, this is pretty much all I do. So I must say that sheltering in place really hasn't changed much for me personally, except, you know, in my daily routine, except that I'm afraid to go to the supermarkets. So I'm basically just eating from whatever inventory I already had because I'm terrified with, you know, my husband not being here. And now if he can get home, he's, he's going to have this compromised immune system. I'm just trying to stay as healthy as I possibly can because I'm all my dogs have. And I want my husband to be able to come home to a safe house. 
So, you know, hopefully they can get this straightened out soon and we can go back to life as usual. Okay, so for our second card, we have our flirty... Is this flirty flamingo? Oh my gosh, am I, am I dating myself or what here, people? Is it flirt? Now I gotta see what color this is. I wanna say it's flirty flamingo. It is, la la, it is flirty flamingo. I'm all set. See, I just saw Sandy is watching and I'm already thrown off. <laughs> so don't laugh at me, Sandy. Oh, Sandy, I don't have box mac and cheese. The both boxes he bought me were so far out of code, I won't eat them. <laughs> it shows how well my Walmart rotates stock. They're out of code. I have to bring them back. All right, so we have our flirty flamingo. It's four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half. We once again have our stitched rectangle for the inside of the card. Nope, actually, this is for the outside of the card. And then we have a smaller stitched rectangle. This is actually for the inside of the card. Nope, I was right. The smaller one is for the outside, the larger one's for the inside. So we're going to swap those. Then we have a piece of our pattern designer series paper. And I like using these busier prints for backgrounds. Um, I think they're really hard to kind of digest as big pieces, but when you start layering on top of them, they become a lot easier uh, to, to live with. Um, so this piece is, like I said, is four by five and a quarter. And then we have a four and one eighth by five and three eighth layer of the lipstick. And that's gonna be for mounting our designer series paper on. All right, so let's do some adhering before I get all tangled up in these layers. So we're just gonna use our liquid glue. And I can feel that mine's running out. I'm glad that Stampin' Up! is still picking and shipping orders because I'm going through product like crazy. There might be a small delay as they've gone to longer and longer split shifts. Um, so some orders may take a couple more days to process and get on the road, but they are still working and they're still shipping and they're still picking. They're still supporting us as demonstrators. Um, the CEO was on doing a Facebook Live, giving us some more updates and cheering us on. So it's really been pretty incredible. All right, so this layer, I'm just gonna flat glue to the front of my card. So it's straight. So there's just a tiny bit of that flirty flamingo showing. And then we're gonna stamp this panel for the front. And I had that piece of scrap. I gotta bring that scrap back in. And once again, we're gonna do a tree, except this time I'm gonna use a more traditional color and I'm gonna use soft suede. So I've got soft suede for my trunk. And I have the wrong panel. I want the smaller one. It's easy to get them mixed up. They're not that much different in size. So I'm gonna stamp my trunk in the soft suede. Then I need to come back in with my fronds and my old olive. Is anyone else a really messy stamper? Because I have stuff everywhere. It's a does. If you could see what I have going on in this room, you would just laugh because this was all nice and organized before I started. And I've already made a total disaster out of it. All right, so this time I'm going to take my fronds and I'm only going to do four because I actually want to leave a gap in the middle this time. 
So I have four fronds. And I'm gonna get that soft suede back in here. And this is when you're gonna totally laugh because this was genius, what I did next. I decided that I wanted my, um, blah, blah, blah. I wanted my palm tree to have coconuts. So I actually found the stamp set Tags and Bloom, and it has these filler images for the little flowers and I decided to turn them into coconuts. So I'm gonna ink them up in the soft suede. And then I'm going to put them on my palm tree. So now my palm tree has coconuts. Ho ho. I thought that was really funny. I thought it was cute. All right. So while we're doing that, we'll put that aside to dry for a second. And we may as well repeat the same thing on the inside. So I guess I could have started there, but if I don't go in order, I will completely lose track of where I, where I am as if I haven't already. So once again, we're gonna do our tree in the soft suede. Then we're gonna do our fronds. in the green and then make sure I have the soft suede in front of me and I'm just like throwing things helter skelter over here good grief we're gonna come back in with our coconuts. I just made that a little bit darker because I was seeing a little too much of the leaves through the soft suede. So there's our coconuts. Oh, it just cracks me up. And as long as we're doing the inside, you may as well finish it off. And I want it, you know, it's really funny because when I got this Tags and Bloom stamp set, I was seeing this greeting, um, I miss your face. And that's not really the way I talk. It's not my kind of message. I typically would not say that. But then this whole coronavirus outbreak happened. And how fitting is... I miss your face for these times. Because you do, you can't see anybody anymore. So the inside of my card is actually going to say, I miss your face. Because there are a lot of faces I miss that I can't see because we're all having to be socially isolated. So that is the inside of the card. We'll bring back the outside. And we need to do some more stamping. So I have a piece of scrap Whisper White. And we need to stamp some dinosaurs. So I have Mr. Longneck. If anyone can tell me what the names of these dinosaurs are so I can stop calling them Longneck, Little Arms, Flying. That would be great. All right, so I'm gonna ink up Mr. Longneck in Pool Party. And I'm going to stamp him on my scrap. And my dinosaur is so pink, I can't even tell if he's inked up. Then I need my lovely lipstick. Oh, there was ink on that stamp. Couldn't tell with all that pink. And then I need the flying one again. And he's in lovely lipstick. 
And if you've been following this week, you know that all the colors that I'm using in these cards actually came from the designer series paper. So they make it really simple for you to coordinate with the designer series paper by listing the colors they used right on the um, package. Next, I'm gonna come in with a greeting. I've got a little hello here. This little tiny hello actually came from Varied Vases. So it's this little hello right here. I'm gonna ink that up again in lovely lipstick. And stamp that onto my paper. And then we just need to finish off our dinosaur. So I'm back with the um, peacock and I need his, I need to buy more blocks so I don't have to keep swapping. We need his spots. I love putting these spots on the dinosaurs. They're so cute. Okay, so now he's spotty and I think that's all of our stamping. So as we did before, we would take our coordinating dies, layer them on top, and die cut them out. And for my little hello, I'm actually using this little cloud die, and he came from the, the wiggle bugs dies. Um, they're the, the wiggly bugs dies. So it's the one that has the leaf that we used on Monday and the little bugs that I used in my alternative sample, the grass, a uh, little mushroom, but there's also a cloud in there. So I'm gonna use my cloud to die cut my hello. And through the magic of all the prep I did this afternoon, believe it or not, I've already die cut everybody. So they're already cut. And now we can do our assembly. So we need to bring back in our card and we'll do our layers. So I'm gonna put this on the inside of the card before I make a mistake and use it on the front. Oh, but you know what? First, I needed to do something inside. I totally forgot. I totally forgot. I gotta clean this off. I gotta clean that. Where's where did mine go? I forgot to grab my ink pad. I gotta clean this off because I don't want to do it in blue. I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. All right, we're gonna take our flirty flamingo. And we're just gonna do some random spots in the corner because when we adhere this to the inside i just want to bring a little bit extra something to the inside just give it a little pattern for this to play off of i think that'll work just fine all right so this is just going to get adhered to the inside like that. I miss your face. And then on the front, we're going to find the glue again. I had put it upside down in a bucket, so maybe the glue would flow more to the tip. And this is just going to get adhered to the front. And see how now that paper adds just enough to the card, but it, it's not as overpowering as it was. Then we're gonna use dimensionals to put our dinosaurs on the front. So we got two big ones. We'll put another little one behind his head. Do a little one behind his tail. And I wanna do one little teeny tiny one in the middle of his neck to help support his long neck. 
and these just fit so you have to be super careful otherwise you have dimensional showing all right so make sure these are all tacky set him up on the front oh i forgot to give him pupils we have to give him his character there and we got to give this guy his pupil too i'm telling you it adds a lot then we're going to add our flying i guess i want minis going to add our flying dinosaur to the front. So that's one and two. Ugh, having a terrible time with these backings. It's because I know it's boring for you to watch me pick backings off. So he's going to be flying in. He's practicing social distancing. Then we have our hello. And somewhere in this mess, I have my pool party ink. I need a little sponge dauber and I'm just gonna add a tiny little bit of pool party sponging to the edge of my cloud, just so that it has a little contrast against the whisper white background. Okay, so we have our hello. Get a dimensional for that. And that's just gonna layer maybe about there. And there's our card. So now we have hello. I miss your face. That's a cute, I think it came out really cute. So we have this one. This is the one that I was just working off of. And then if you have the designer series paper, if you remember from earlier in the week, the dies also coordinate with the designer series paper so that you can actually cut out the pre-printed dinosaurs from the designer series paper if you don't want to stamp them. So let me grab a piece of it. So this is the piece that I worked off of and cut my images out of. So for example, this dinosaur here can be cut out with this die. So you don't even have to use um, the stamp if you don't want to. You can just go straight to your designer series paper and cut your dinosaurs from there. So I just wanted to show you that this would be what it would look like if you used some of the dinos dinosaurs from the paper versus my dinosaur from stamping. So there's a couple different alternatives. So there you go, there's card number two. And here is card number one. I hope you've enjoyed our class today. Um, unless you vote for me to keep on going, this would be the last in the, in the Celebrating Dino Days series. I can keep going and do another live tomorrow and Friday with the, with the Dino Days, or we can swap to something else. So let me know in your comments below if you wanna see some more dinosaur uh, card samples, or if you are okay with moving on. And if you want to just move on, give me a vote for a new stamp set bundle to play with. Let me know what you need help with, what you need some ideas on, and I will dig through my stash and come up with something. So thank you for joining me for my Live at Five card class. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed Dino Days, and I hope you have a great evening. I will stamp with you again soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye.